they say that there is no edge to the universe, nor center. The only idea is that they have is a big bang or are coming from the other side of the black hole. Kind of like light shining out of darkness, right? So thinking along these lines, yet beyond these lines, it was all born from within, in the mind of God. What we see, which exists us in this continuation, is as it's been given to me, existing, expanding, expressed to an eternal hub. Hub not meaning like a hub of a waggling wheel, but more like a portal to which an existence is being expressed, an eternal existence unfolding and expressing through temporal portals, light forever being expressed through darkness, like unto the darkness of a black hole and out the other end. Only to do this over and over, ages upon ages, darkness does not rule, but is only used to an end intent. What is referred to as the outer darkness in scripture is nothing more than one track in what was meant to be a temporal portal, only to be traversed without end, world without end. We need a total picture which gives us before entrance and after exit. Imagine viewing an animated stack of papers. You grab the center of the stack and let the pages slip through your fingers, stopping short of the beginning and the end. You get a sensation of something, but not the total picture. Flashing frames of time. What you see was once in a mind put into individual frames, tempting to express what was complete in that mind. A reality complete in the mind now being expressed in flashing frames of time. In older filmmaking, you could see the individual frames flicking as the movie rolled. But today there's such speed to filmmaking that what is on the screen appears as real. With high definition TV, you get the sensation of being there. Think of this in light of the old biblical verse, and every imagination of their hearts were evil continually. They had time to develop speed, and what was meant to be temporal became real to them. So much so that what was real became unreal. It is also written and alluded to that time will be speeded up in the end, so much so that those days would have to be cut short, lest all, all flesh perish or get trapped in an unreality. The director cuts the production to his end and intent. A thought to kill the director and screenplay writer, taking over the stage and change the screenplay, playing out what was not originally intended. As great as their production was, God ends it, consummating it to restore it to his original intent. And all who fought for what it was originally intended get to enjoy it ages upon ages uninterrupted.
just suppose that the starry universe that we have seen with Hubble telescope is suddenly gone. Just suppose that the starry skies we once saw with our naked eye at night were also gone. Then just suppose the sun by day, which you've grown used to, was suddenly gone, along with the moon by night. Now suppose that the darkness of space, which once gave our universe its definition, began to part and bright light overcame it. Now see our planet hanging not in the darkness of that one time backdrop of space, but now hanging in pure light. That is the unseen reality. It was this reality that sustained this universe, the sun and moon, and this earth that we have called the reality. The galaxies made up of stars, suns and moons, like lamp holders, now going out. Now suppose, that a being with human form appeared in the bright light and descends down to this earth the same way that this being left in the brightness of day. He that created also sustained, he that sustained also consummates. He truly was the light of the world. We are the light of this world for time with him to the consolation of this age. And once again, the backdrop of the darkness of space will appear again, and the new heavens and the new earth shall appear to once again express who he is and we are, ages upon ages, backdrop upon backdrop. For the stars of heaven and the constellations there did not give their light. The sun is darkened and it's going forth in the moon, not cause its light to shine. I shall shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of its place. The moon shall be confounded and the stars ashamed. The sun shall no more set as we have known it to set. Neither shall your moon withdraw itself, but the Lord shall be your everlasting light and the day of the morning shall be indeed. If I beheld the sun, when it shined, when the moon walking in its brightness, and my heart had been secretly enticed, or my mouth had kissed my hand, then this would be an iniquity. Ideas and opinions handed down by the minds of men, and the reasons and purpose of these things mentioned, to be dealt with by this God, who placed them there for his reasons then I should, be, have, should have denied this God above, outside the box of this universe. Scripture basis of the reason and purpose of this universe. Apart from that, any ideas of men fall short and to the eyes of God are foolishness. experience we are currently involved with, we will return. Call it a period of time coming at us, in our very near future, God's original intent will be accomplished. Many have thought it to be just the millennial reign of Christ, a thousand year period, where evil will be suppressed for this time period till God's intent is fulfilled. Then, strangely, evil will be set loose for a brief moment. If this doesn't get us to see that evil, bad versus good, 
has its purpose in God's original intent, not the world. What would an experience be without the opposites? Would not be considered the true experience. Our coming into this experience had its original intent to enhance us, bring us to a greater fulfillment who we were and will be, and the increase and expansion of God Himself. In that realm, this is and always will be. What you are now experiencing is how this is always existed. In ages to come, this will be seen deeper and deeper as deep cries unto deep. We, as is written, increase with the increase of God, Colossians 2, 19. This would go on forever. Yet an evil seeks to entrap us. The cause of the expansion of God through us to stop. This is our battle, reconciliation of the opposite. This reconciliation comes to what I will be reviewing throughout the videos that I'll be presenting here on YouTube.